In today's episode of AI technology accomplishing things we didn't even dream of before, we've got software by a tech startup that removes the accents of call center workers, converting verbatim speech into a white coated accent. Bizarre, right? You don't even know the worst of it yet. In this video, we're going to explain exactly why and how it works. Let's jump in. First up, the startup and its objectives. When we saw Sorry to Bother You back in 2018, there was definitely that sinking feeling that the film would kind of, sort of, become a reality a few years down the line. What we didn't know was that it had happened way sooner than we expected. The film revolves around a black man hired as a telemarketer told to use his white voice by a colleague, mimicking the accent is supposed to make interactions with customers smoother. And it does, because his numbers shoot up soon after, which doesn't give the viewer the best feeling, to put it simply. That's essentially what a Silicon Valley tech startup called Sonus has come up with. They offer accent translation for call center workers, which makes the employees' accents more palatable to the American ear. Of course, call centers hire people overseas all the time for cheaper labor, so their workers more than often have non-American accents. What the company aims to do is basically make foreign workers sound white to boost their numbers. The employees are given a choice to enable accent translation, which according to the company will help them gain power over their own voices. Having foreign accents is an obstacle for call center workers all around the world, especially in countries like India, the Philippines, etc where workers are even trained to sound more like the Western customers they're addressing. Most of the time, it doesn't work. Sonus hopes its technology can create a shortcut to the whole process, and here's how. Now, for how Sonus works. As reported by SFGate, Sonus is building real-time voice-altering technology by utilizing data about the sounds of different accents and how they fit with each other. Consequently, the AI engine constructed by the company can transform a speaker's accent into a different one. Right now, the main focus is making non-American employees employees sound like Americans. There are a number of debates over whether this is beneficial or not in the long run. For starters, the company's demo voice doesn't sound authentic. Kiran Merchandani from the University of Toronto conducted her research on the treatment of Indian call center employees, and she argues that people likely to be racist towards workers wouldn't exactly be delighted to hear a robotic app voice instead. So the accent translator may just be redundant, especially since the addition of a robot app will inevitably dehumanize workers even more, making them more more liable to abuse. Then comes the part where the workers have the choice to enable accent translation. Well, it's not that simple. Experts argue that the choice is simply an illusion. Once call center employees realize that their customers prefer the AI version of their speech, they will choose to use the accent translator even if they don't feel fully comfortable. Sanasa's president begs to differ, however, saying he doesn't foresee anything negative coming out of the idea because, according to him, accents are not a problem because speakers have them, they're only a problem because they leave for bias and misunderstandings. So the question remains, is Sonus as altruistic as it aims to be? Sonus claims this technology is taking a step towards empowering individuals and deepening empathy. The company managed to raise $32 million in venture capital back in June. One founder, Bob Lonergan, raved about the software, saying it has the potential to revolutionize communication. Now, here's the catch. In this case, there's a very fine line between helping marginalized people conquer bias and perpetuating the same bias that makes their lives difficult in the first place. A. Anish, a sociologist at the University of Oregon's School of Global Studies and Languages, has spent a big chunk of his life studying call centers and access neutralization. In fact, he got himself hired as a telemarketer in 2007 as part of his research, then detailed his experience in his book, Natural Accent, How Language, Labor, and Life Became Global. From his first-hand experience, he witnessed how the call center employees were put through lengthy neutralization training to be comprehensible to the customers, which just made their accent less thick. Workers had to learn pronunciations of lengthy words like laboratory, along with erasing parts of Indian English, like frequently using sir. What's more is that they had to learn unique American words and memorize all 50 U.S. states and capitals, consequently mimicking the culture while diminishing their own. Quite a demeaning process, to say the least. But here's what the founders of Sana say. According to Shirat Kashava Narayana, one of the co-founders of the startup, the reasoning behind the software dates back to nearly 20 years ago when he worked at a call center in Bangalore. He was discriminated against because of his Indian accent and forced to go by a white American name. Eventually, he left the job and opened his own call center in 2015, but the discomfort of his first experience stuck with him. Sanasa's president is another call center industry veteran. Marty Massey Sareem believes call center work should be regarded as a sort of cosplay, which the company is only aiming to improve. Since it's cheaper to take calls out of America, all the work has been outsourced, and if a customer is already upset about a bill or cable 
travel-related issues, they're going to be even more annoyed when they hear an accent. They're going to want to speak to someone in America, and the customer service employee is going to have to deal with their annoyance. That bias is what Saunas aims to erase, and in doing so, both caller and employee are satisfied. Not only that, but the software is already in use by a thousand call center workers in India and the Philippines. Though workers can turn the accent translator on and off as they please, the manager of the center has administrative rights over it for security purposes. Apparently, user feedback has been positive, too. Call center agents reportedly feel more confident and assured on the phone with the software. Now, for further sociological issues surrounding the software, there's no shortage of inequalities that call center workers have to deal with, like having to sleep all day and work nights to adapt to American times, which is isolating to already discriminated workers in their home countries, not to mention the low base salary, which makes call center operating a pretty thankless job. Call center employees are constantly trying to hide these inequalities. Everything is designed to maximize profit, even the procedure through which callers are connected to agents. So it's no surprise that Anish has his reservations with Saunas. Looking at it narrowly, it's good for the agents because they don't have to undergo so much unnecessary training, nor are they at risk of being abused for their own accents. In a broader perspective, it may cause more harm than good. To put it simply, the artificial neutralizing of accents diminishes the humanity of the agent on the other end of the call. It could increase ignorance to indifference, giving people the leeway to avoid reality, which is that people around the world have different accents, cultures, upbringings, etc. At the end of the day, it could create an even lonelier, socially disconnected future. But wait, there's more. Chris Gilliard, a researcher studying privacy, surveillance, and their negative impacts on marginalized communities, explained that call centers are inherently marginalistic. The whole idea of outsourcing seems to be centered around giving people of other countries the most thankless jobs to deal with. Plus, it's not like transforming their accents will change that. It would only cater to people's racist beliefs. That's not all either. Creating the software inherently doesn't consider people's humanity or dignity. It will unavoidably erase the individuality of people around the globe. It eradicates the beauty and depth of people's own cultures, dialects, and languages, which is deeply saddening to say the least. Finally, Narayana's argument against the criticism. Narayana argues that Saunas approaches the world as it is. Actually, his argument is pretty skewed. He went on to say that though the world is imperfect and flawed as it is, we sort of need to make do. Making an unsettling comparison, he basically insinuated that makeup exists to cover imperfections too, because people can't accept each other the way they are. And the same formula applies to accents. He built his technology to alleviate the agent's suffering by removing theirs, because he doesn't want them to go through what he went through. Now, this example is pretty weird, to put it simply. Makeup is arguably not a real choice. It's something society perpetuates as necessary to look beautiful. In the same way, if an employer perpetuates the eradication of people's unique accents, it's not really a choice. Even if the startup calls this technology optional, there's very high probability it will soon become widely available and eventually mandatory. In addition to that, most of the issues Narayana outlined from his own call center experience wouldn't be changed by this technology. Sorry to bother you, Sanas, but this initiative is a lot more nuanced than you think. That's a wrap for this video. Do you think this tech development will prove to be beneficial? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.